Welcome to this edition of AIP Massachusetts Fraud Talk Tuesdays. We are here the second Tuesday of each month from 12 to 12.30, where we discuss a different scam and how you can protect yourself and your family from becoming victimized by fraud and scams. My name is Jackie Cairo Williams. I am a volunteer with AIP Massachusetts. And our guest today is Danielle Bass, Community Relations Supervisor from the Better Business Bureau. Today's topic is Time to Talk Scams with AIP and BBB. You may have joined us today with questions already in mind. If you have, please put them in the Q&A and at the bottom of the screen, or if questions come up during the presentation, put them into the Q&A as well. This session is being recorded. You will receive a copy of this recording you can share with your family and friends. At the end of the presentation, we will share a page with links to a number of resources. So let's get started. So Danielle, I guess the first question is what role the BBB plays in protecting the public from scams and fraud? Absolutely. Um, so BBB works to educate the public of scams through a couple different ways. Um, our main way is the press releases of our latest scams, our scam tracker, our database, and our social media has been a huge portion. Um, basically, the minute we are made aware of new scams, we work to educate both consumers and businesses alike through all of our channels of what that scam is, because there's always new different ones popping up. Uh, so we want people to stay on top of it and stay educated. Our BBB scam tracker is a free tool anyone can use to report suspected scams. Um, and that helps us warn others so they can avoid similar things. What are the top reported scams to BBB? So for consumers, the top reported scams, number one would be online purchases. Number two is cryptocurrency and number three is employment scams. So for the online purchase scams, it's different things like clicking links through um, social media, such as Facebook, Instagram ads, different things, going to buy the product and it never coming in or coming in incorrect. Um, those are online purchase scams. Mm -hmm. For cryptocurrency, um, it's when you go to buy cryptocurrency because it's pretty unregulated and not a lot of people know much about it. It's an easy target for scams um, and people lose the most money for that one. And then employment scams, it's exactly as it sounds. It's different job listings people reach out to that aren't real. Or you get an email saying you can work from home. You just have to get these packages delivered or X, Y, Z. Those are the top three scams we have been seeing. Um, but we'll get our scam tracker report that will come out for the latest scams of 2022. And what was the top three for that? Um, and that comes out in the spring. Hmm. I know they're alerting the public to ongoing and emerging scams and fraud is important. ARP does this with bi-weekly fraud watch alerts. Can you talk about the BBB scam alerts, what they are and how to sign up to receive them? Absolutely. Um, so BBB has our scam alerts um, and scams unfortunately are never going to go away. We can only continue to educate ourselves, like I said, on the latest scams. Um, one way to do that is our scam alerts. You can sign up right on our website um, and you get alerted to new scams weekly right through your email. Um, I got mine uh, this week uh, talking about Valentine's Day scams and romance scams. And it just gives you a list of what the scam is, how it's affecting people, and then a few tips on how to avoid it. So it's a nice way to kind of be aware of what's out there. It's not, not every scam is going to happen to you, but the more we're educated on them, the easier it is to spot them. Oh, wow. I received a BBB scam alert several weeks ago about a parking ticket scam. That was a new one to me. How does that work? And are there other new scams that are being reported as well? Absolutely. Yeah, the park a ticking scam was a new one for me as well. I had never heard of it. Um, I got alerted to that via the scam alert. And that basically is when you get a parking ticket or something that looks like a parking ticket on your car, whether it be in a parking lot or um, city parking, street parking, um, and you go to pay it and it's not legitimate. It looks like a real website. It looks like a real ticket, um, but it's a scammer that has just gone and put a very realistic looking ticket on your car 
obviously we want to pay that we don't want an outstanding payment due um so ways to avoid that one is just double checking with the parking lot or the city that you've even received one if you are not 100 percent certain it is a parking ticket and you um, need to pay it check in with the city or just call the parking lots number and reach out directly to them and ask and they will let you know if you've received one um, and then look at the website it's asking you to pay on is it asking you to pay with gift cards with Venmo in different ways than you would normally pay? And is the website secure or is it um, looking a little bit different than the regular website um, you would pay off of? If there's anything kind of fishy about it, like I said, take those couple extra steps and confirm it before you submit your payment and pay with a credit card because it's a little bit easier um, to cancel that than it is, say, paying with a debit card um, or different things like that. Great Another... Um, new scam we've seen popping up is a phishing scam on Facebook. So basically it's scammers send a fake email saying you have breached a Facebook community guideline um, and they ask you to click a link. If you click the link, you're taking to a very official looking page. The website looks real um, and you're prompted to complete a form to appeal this. The form is looking for your information, your Facebook login, your username, password, all those kind of things. And once you go to complete that because you want to appeal this, the scammer saves that information and is able to hack into your Facebook um, and do what they please. So if you get emails like that from Facebook saying your account's been hacked, you, you know, you've breached something, take a couple extra looks at it and verify it rather than just automatically clicking on the link and following the instructions. Um, I know it scares us in the moment, but it's, it's mm. worth uh, verifying. How does the BBB keep up with these new and changing fraud schemes? Uh, we keep up with them through our BBB scam tracker. Um, and like I mentioned before, anyone can report scams to it and our team looks into them. So basically it's right on BBB.org. Our scam tracker is a um, large database where you can report a scam. You can look up scams in your zip code, in your town, and see what's been happening to people mm -hmm. lately. So you're aware of what's happening in your community rather than um, being aware of scams in general happening across the United States. It's a great way to be aware of what's happening directly in your community. Uh, the BBB Institute of Marketplace Trust is able to produce research that provides fresh insights into the scam landscape. Um, so they use data pulled from the BBB scam tracker when people report it and other sources um, and provide us with those scam alerts by identifying the latest tactics, tactics used by scammers, creating data-driven consumer education materials. Um, and programs and sharing our I'm sorry, there's some background noise. I'm sorry. Uh, I apologize for that. Um, people are supposed to be on mute. I apologize. So I think that's great information. So we've already said how to so in file a scam. You told us how to do it, right? To go to the site. Um, yeah, the so you can. What happens to those complaints? Absolutely. So you can go right to BBB.org to file it. Um, it's really easy. You just go straight to the scam tracker and it'll have look up a scam, report a scam. You just click report a scam. You go ahead and enter all the information that you know about the scam um, and what happened. You submit it to our team of investigators for internal review, and then they go through and audit the information. They'll reach out to you if they need any additional information or have any trouble finding stuff. Um, and from there, they take it and look into it and try to help you. Wow. How does BBB collaborate with the AARP? Um, just like this. <laughs> so <laughs> through webinars, panels, and other education, um, educational events, uh, helping educate the public on fraud. We've done other panels together, I know, in the past couple of years. Um, and it is so great to collaborate because... We both have excellent resources, especially when it comes to scams and fraud. Um, and I can't say it enough, education is key when it comes to scams. It's a billion dollar industry for them. Um, so they're always gonna be coming up with new things. So for us to be able to collaborate and educate more people is just something that makes me really excited. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. So uh, can, what, can I jump in for a minute? Um, yes. can we, to, it is Valentine's Day. Um, Danielle, um, and you did yes. mention the the um, romance. romance. Can you talk a little bit about that and how it works and how people are can be hooked into it? 
Romance scams. Romance Danielle. scams. Yeah. How, how Absolutely. Those... Yeah. Romance scams. They are very hot topics uh, this time of year. Mm -hmm. So we see them pop up with Valentine's Day and everything like that. We see them all year round, but obviously they come up the most this time of year. Right. Um, so romance scams can develop through social media. Uh, someone reaching out to you via a messaging platform, mm -hmm. um, Instagram, Facebook, whatever it may be. Um, even LinkedIn, they can reach out. Oh, yeah. uh, someone typically you don't know and they are looking to connect with you. They usually try to mirror the same interests you have. So mm -hmm. if your profile um, shows a lot of photos of you with animals, they'll say, I love animals, you know. Mm -hmm. You have a dog, I have a dog. Or if it shows you as a single parent, they'll say, I'm a single parent. Um, so they're really trying to build that trust with you. Um, and then as you get comfortable, they'll start asking for different things such as, um, you know what, I'm trying to start my business, do you mind loaning me? you know, a hundred dollars to get off the ground, or I'm really sick this week. Um, mm -hmm. Could you send me a gift card to help me um, buy my child a birthday present, different things like that. So once they build that trust and connection with you, and it's something we saw a lot through COVID because people were really lonely, and were not able to leave their house, and we're looking for that connection online. So when you have something like that, where someone's really looking to build a relationship with you online, look for those red flags. Um, do you have any mutual friends with them on the social media they're trying to connect you with? Um, have you, you know, are you able to meet them? Do they video call? Are they asking for money? That's usually a dead giveaway that that is typically a scam. So if you're noticing any of those red flags, um, reach out to friends and family, kind of confirm like, hey, does this look weird to you? Or reach out to the Better Business Bureau if we really think it's a scam and we will absolutely help you um, if you want to report it to the BBB scam tracker. Um, but just knowing to look out for those red flags when somebody is too good to be true in those aspects is uh, what you have to look out for. That's very good information. There's been many women, many women and men who have been scammed and have been on television speaking of it. So that is great information of what to actually look for because people don't necessarily do that. So let's see, let's get to the other question. As a wrap up, let's see, here's a slide. Can, can, we, jump, can we jump into a little bit about identity th theft and some of the things you're seeing with identity theft going on? Absolutely, yeah. Identity theft is something um, that people don't think about typically until it happens to them. Um, so you really have to look out for those kind of things. Be watching um, your credit scores. Um, so checking in with the credit bureaus, making sure nobody is pulling credit um, lines of credit with you, watching your accounts um, and being aware of different things. We have so much stuff that we do online. There's so much information about us that it's pretty simple if there is um, a data breach or something where somebody gets your social security information, things like that, that they are able to um, steal your identity. And it is such a long process to get it back if it does happen. So having those extra steps in place, you can actually freeze all three um, lines of credit through the three credit bureaus. If you choose to, it takes about 24 hours to freeze and unfreeze them. It doesn't affect any current lines of credit you have going. And if you would like to open up a new line of credit, you can just call them and unfreeze it. But it's just a nice way to guarantee um, that somebody can't open up a new line of credit in your name. Something a lot of people don't think about with identity theft is that it can happen to anybody. So we think of it happening to adults, um, but there have been data breaches with um, preschools. There has been, um, you know, someone's broken in and taken information from children and people pull out lines of credit on children because nobody runs their child's credit until they're, you know, going to college, getting their first car, doing things like that. And they're looking to get a loan mm -hmm. and they figure out, oh my goodness, why do you have, you know, three lines of credit for a boat, a house, and, you know, three jet skis in Texas. <laughs> and if they haven't been checking or being aware of their child's credit score, someone along the lines might have gotten that information. Um, so checking your child's or grandchild's information as well and making sure that that is secure. You can freeze their lines of credit if they don't need it. Um, unfortunately, there are more and more data breaches happening. So just staying on top of it and making sure that we are aware of who has our information and um, you know where it is going. How about you talked about the, the that's the credit freeze. 
um, that's in case that's probably in case you're not going to need credit for a while. How about um, a credit alert? What about those? Um, so the credit alerts you can set up as well, but for the credit freeze, you can do that and unfreeze it within 24 hours if you would like to do that as well. Um, and like I said, it doesn't affect your lines of credit, um, but you can set up different credit alerts um, directly with, um, I'm losing the word, <laughs> your- um, Credit bureaus? Credit bureau. Yes, for the credit bureaus, thank you. Three, yes, three <laughs> All three credit bureaus. Those people, right. Um, you also mentioned something about cryptocurrency. So is yes. that another new, is that a new scam that's going on and how long has that been going on? It's more recent. Definitely, we saw it really pop up um, in 2021 the most. Um, and that is with different things um, like um, the cryptocurrency. One of the popular ones is Bitcoin. Bitcoin and right. different things like that have popped up, different applications for different versions of cryptocurrency. And people go and they buy some because they want to be a part of this new trend. Um, but unfortunately, they're buying it from scammers. So when they try to get out of it and they want their money back, they have fees, um, they're charged taxes, all these different things. And in the end, they can't ever get their money back. So when they want to go back to liquidating their money, they can't do it. Their money is just stuck in the scammer world of this cryptocurrency they invested in but realistically it wasn't a real cryptocurrency right um, it was a scam but like i said because it's not something a lot of people are fully educated on and it's not very regulated yet it's a beautiful place for scammers to thrive because people aren't super aware of what to look out for and what the red flags are in that we're something along like a phone scam or romance scams or those things that we've heard about more in the news we're much more alert to I have a question that came in. It says, when I need to mail some, mail a check, uh, what's the safest way to do it? Should I bring it to the post office? Um, do you have anything about checks and the scams going on with checks and, and the post office? Absolutely. So I would bring it directly to the post office. Um, and honestly, if you can avoid using a check, that was what I would recommend the most. Checks just have so much of our information on them that if someone gets their hands on them, it is so easy for them mm -hmm. to get into an account. And if a bad, all it takes is one bad apple to mm -hmm. get their hands on it. Um, I would definitely not leave it in a mailbox um, like your mailbox and wait for some the mailman to come pick it up. I would bring it directly um, to the post office or directly to the entity if it's in town that you're bringing that check to um, so that you're making sure it's, you know, being handled by the least amount of people possible. And speaking about checks, um, there's a question about uh, using a gel pen so people, the scammers can't get a hold, if they get a hold of the check, they can't wash the check. Can you talk about check washing? Yeah, that's something that's popped up um, and I've heard a little bit about that. I am not fully versed on it, but I do know that it is something that if they get their hands on it, basically you wanna be writing with a dark enough pen that they can't, um, it's exactly as it sounds, wash that information off and rewrite it to themselves. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't heard of if gel pens are the best pen to go with, obviously um, pens rather than pencils, um, right. but a dark pen. Um, and uh, if I could say it better, but not, not checks if you can avoid it. <laughs> right, right. Dennis, more questions from the chat and Q&A? Um, no, I'm looking for some more. If you have any questions out there, please put them into the Q&A. And um, yes. we, will, uh, we I, will answer them. Um, something I can go off of um, for checks and, you know, mailing and everything like that is we see it much more during the holiday season, but it's the porch pirates, people that, you know, you get oh, something yeah. delivered and they grab it right off your porch. We see that now still too. Um, so just being aware of what you're having delivered um, to your house, when it's coming, different things like that, what you're getting in the mail, because if we have a beautiful, nice big TV delivered to our front porch, but we're not home all day, a scammer is going to walk right by or a bad yeah. apple, whoever they may be and mm -hmm. pick that right up. So you can put instructions in the delivery to have it delivered at least to you know your back right. door to have it delivered to your office building if you work in an office that way somebody's you know receiving it at a reception desk um, to have them hold it at the post office 
um, to track it. You know, Amazon is really good at sending you updates for when it's coming. You can check updates with UPS, FedEx, different things like that, just to be aware, especially if you're getting big ticket items in the mail um, coming up for birthdays, holidays, whatever it may be, um, and being aware of what's being delivered because people are definitely watching. And if they see a nice package on the porch, it's right. very easy for them to grab it and walk away. Yeah, I see that with my next, my doorbell, you know, that I can see all of that and we get all mm -hmm. this this neighborhood stuff, you know, that alerts you to things like that. Um, one yes. of the other thing is that happened actually to me was that um, I was working on my computer and all of a sudden an alert came in that somebody was hacking into my computer, but actually these were the hackers doing it. Yes. So, <laughs> you have any advice on that? I mean, I know what I did, you know. Absolutely, but yeah. So people have had that happen to them where basically um, a hacker takes over their computer and it, it says, you know, your computer's been hacked, you're having this issue, um, click here and we'll, you know, this is Microsoft or this is Apple or this is whoever and we'll help you get it off. Um, but realistically, it's the hacker that's sending right. you that information. So they want to then, you know, have a payment or actually be allowed in to take over your screen or different things like that. And they're able to pull information, you know, you're paying them money, different things like that. So they're either getting money or information out of you um, and we don't wanna give them either. So something like that pops up and you get a notification that says, you know, this is Apple notifying you that your computer's mm -hmm. been hacked or your screen goes black or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And you are not tech familiar, I highly recommend either having a tech person in your life that you can bring it to. Do not click anything as right. urgent as it is. Um, mm -hmm. Scammers play off our emotions. They want to make us either really excited, really nervous, really scared, really angry. That way we kind of forget our red flag stuff that we would normally think about in everyday situations when your emotions are heightened like that, when you panic, when you're, you know, your computer, your work, all your stuff that's on there goes black. You just want to click it and fix it right away. You don't think to, you know, double check, double check those things before you start giving away information and verify it. Um, and if anything, bring it straight to the tech friendly friend that you have. Um, I always recommend somebody either have, you know, the Apple store near them, the geek squad, mm -hmm. um, anything right. like that. I bring it to our IT guy. If my computer has any issues, even if it's silly, I would rather them double check it than go down that rabbit hole and then have to backtrack. Thank you. Now, that was and we great. did talk about Valentine's day and the romance scams. We get, we're also in the middle of getting in the middle of tax season. Any thoughts on, oh, yeah. on scams relative to the tax season yeah we haven't even had those alerts start to come out um but just it's the same as everything else being aware of what's out there if you're getting emails saying we'll help do your taxes for free this is a oh, different yeah. program yeah. sign up here different things just do your research when you're getting that kind of information before you're submitting it through anybody else. Um, verify everything. That's I can't say that enough. Um, just double check before you're starting to submit all that. That is such important information. If it says, you know, if you pay $100, you'll get your tax return quicker. Mm -hmm. um, if it's asking you to do all these different things, verify um, before you start sending any type of money or inputting all that information. Because there are resources that can help you with it. Right. Kelly has a question. Dennis, do you want to read that? Yeah, uh, yeah. it says, uh, can you speak about uh, Facebook Marketplace, uh, in particular, uh, potential buyers um, who have been who are actually scammers? Like Facebook, yes. no Marketplace, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're searching on Facebook Marketplace, you know, looking for a, a couch, a desk, a whatever it may be, and you come across different people that are either trying to buy your stuff or you're trying to buy stuff from them. It is another one of those things where you want to verify. It is really hard because it's like a it's very similar to like a Craigslist or any type of like yard sale site like that. You don't 100 percent know who that person is on the end of that listing or who's trying to buy it from you. So just look out for those red flags. Is it too good to be true? Are they asking to send you money and then you send them money back? Mm -hmm. um, so if it's a scammer saying, I'll pay a deposit of, you know, $200 and then you can just send it back to me once, you know, I pick it up. Right. If, if the item's only $100, you can send me that extra $100 back once I pick it up. Don't do any of that. Um, that scammer, their account won't go through and then you'll be out $200 or $100, whatever you send back to them. If they're asking for anything in 
gift cards, that's a red flag. Um, if they're asking, um, always meet up at a local location, the local police department, library, whatever it may be. Um, and just be aware if it starts to look like something that you are not comfortable with, I always say just move on to the next. Um, we always err on the side of being really polite to people and that's a wonderful thing. Um, but if you think there are any red flags, it's okay to just say, I'm sorry, you know, this isn't gonna work out and move on to a different person rather than trying to continue to be, you know, really polite and work with somebody. Just, you know, err on that side of caution. Good advice. Good okay, advice. I just shared a screen here for everyone. Um, these are some resources that are out there. Um, if you'd like to sign up for the uh, Better Business Bureau Scam Alerts, uh, when you get this, we'll send out this slide separately also. You can click on this link and get that. You can look at the B uh, Better Business Bureau track, a scam tracker, and you can get current scam alerts from, uh, from the Better Business Bureau. In addition, AARP has several resources, including the Fraud Watch Network. There's a link to that. Um, you can... Um, if you need, if you've been if you've been victimized, you can call the helpline, and you can also uh, get uh, help if you've been a victim, if you've been victimized uh, through the support uh, on the virtual support uh, network that uh, AARP has. So you'll be a, you'll be getting this slide with all these links that you can uh, click on and go to those specific sites. So Danielle or uh, Jackie, you can wrap it up here. So yeah, as a wrap up, we've already saw the resources. Thank you so much to BBB and to AARP. And I want to thank you, Danielle, for all of your help. I don't see you anymore, though. So I hope you're still there somewhere. Oh, I'm right here. Thank you. <laughs> no. no, thank you for having me. I no, it's that. absolutely great. That information, absolutely, seriously, great. Very good. Your insight and the work that Better Business Bureau is doing for us to protect us is absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much. And so I just want to say next month, our Fraud Talk Tuesday, and I hope you join in too, Danielle, will be job search and job posting scams with Alice Diamond, who's an AIP volunteer. Alice has worked with job seekers, young and old, and has been firsthand, seen firsthand type scams being perpetrated on job seekers. I've seen that too. If you are someone you know, is or will be looking for a job or a career move, Alice will provide some valuable information. So please join us on March 14th at 12 p.m. for AARP Five Watch. I just wanna say thank you so much again, Danielle. It has been seriously a wealth of information. Thank you, Dennis. Thank, thank you, you all, I all the Kelly Lefflers. <laughs> thank you all. <laughs> have a great thank day. Thank you, have an excellent afternoon. And okay. have a great Valentine's Day. Great. You too. Bye-bye. <laughs>